Monday, the 8th of August, 1988. A royal family occasion in every sense. To mark our centenary, Her Majesty the Queen, accompanied by His Royal Highness the Duke of Edinburgh, were coming to open the new soap plant at Port Sunlight. The whole event officially got underway at 11.15, but before that, a vast amount of work had already been done under the watchful eye of Fred Lewis, who was responsible for organising the event. The village had definitely decided to make it a flag-waving day, with the children very much in the forefront, emphasising that centenary celebrations had as much to do with the future as the past. There was no sign of any Monday morning feeling. The day had dawned bright and had become hot and sunny. The outside world was interested too, but today ceremony and security have to go hand in hand. And at Port Sunlight, Special Branch Police had taken over the factory at 7 o'clock on the 7th of August to start an inch-by-inch inch search, just to be sure. At 5.30 in the morning, the security all clear was given, and from then on, the atmosphere was as relaxed as possible for Her Majesty's one-and-a-half-hour walkabout. Out came the silver spade for the ceremonial tree planting, the same one used by Elizabeth Lever a hundred years ago to cut the first sod at Port Sunlight. At the more down-to-earth level, an offending ice cream on the road where the royal car was to stop had to be hastily removed, with barely time to put the bowl and brush away before the motorcade pulled up. At 11.15, on the dot, the Queen arrived at Port Sunlight. Minutes earlier, Prince Philip had arrived separately by helicopter in the factory grounds. He'd been met by Lord Leverhulme, and together they waited for a few minutes until the Queen's motorcade arrived. When the Queen and Prince Philip met, they briefly kissed. The crowd cheered with appreciation. A chance now for many more members of the crowd to really feel part of an historic occasion. A chance too for the Queen and the Duke to savour the atmosphere of the day and meet many civic dignitaries. There was much to see and much to do in the course of the day, but for now it was a time for a pleasant stroll, with Port Sunlight clearly living up to its name. In days gone by, royal visits tended to be pure ceremonial. But nowadays, with all members of the royal family, there is a genuine and searching interest in what they see and what they hear about on these official occasions. Among the welcoming party were the chairman of Unilever, Mr. Michael Angus and Mrs. Angus. The 12 million pound plant that the Queen was about to open is the most modern in the world. Lever already export to 40 different countries, but the hope and intention is that the new facility will widen Lever's market. A timely move in the battle to preserve jobs for the next 100 years. And now for the first formal duty, the ceremonial tree planting. Mr. Bill Burns, Managing Director of UML, led the Queen to the prepared spot. Her Majesty showed a great deal of interest in the history of the Silver Spade. After the tree planting, the royal party moved on to Lever House, where they met the chairman of Lever Brothers, Mr. Ronnie Gray and Mrs. Gray. It was a chance to see something of the company's activities when they watched a video prior to rejoining the royal car for the journey to the new soap-making plant. 
throughout the day, the Queen had quite a bit of walking to do. In all, there was over a mile of red carpet. En route, Ronnie Gray was able to point out several landmarks, including a sculpture simply called Soap, which Michael Angus had unveiled on the 3rd of March to mark the beginning of the centenary celebrations. But now, they were arriving for the climax of the centenary at Port Sunlight. Awaiting the royal visitors here, the project team. Ronnie Gray introduced first project engineer Jim Durkin. Next, on secondment from Hindustan Lever, Rajiv Banga. And while the Queen was being formally introduced, works manager John Taylor was talking to the Duke of Edinburgh. Next on the project team came George Reed, Gordon McNee, and Brian Shelley, all of Lieber Brothers. Finally, Roy Gernon of Monk's Construction who built the plant. The Queen was obviously keenly interested in the scale of the operation. Once inside the plant, Her Majesty could begin to appreciate the truly high-tech nature of the project. Over six miles of stainless steel pipes are needed for the processing procedure. As the base soap makes its way along a fully computerized route, from raw materials to becoming such well-known brand names as Lux, Lifebuoy, Shield. Lux. Along other lines in the soap packing hall, she could have seen many brands in many languages. Some names identical to the ones that we know in the UK. Others are individual to the countries for which they're destined. Before the official unveiling, the royal party had one more group to meet. They were representatives of the personnel who actually make the soap. Roger Newham, Dick Thompson, Nick Owen, Dave Ennion, Margaret Norton, Christine Westbrook, Alan Marsh,
John Ryan and Billy Dunn. Of course, no royal visit would be complete without a posy of flowers. And today, the responsibility of making the presentation was in the capable hands of Helen and Caroline Taylor. Her Majesty had come to Merseyside on the Royal Yacht Britannia, which made the gift she was about to receive particularly suitable. It's now believed to occupy a place of honour on the Royal Yacht and must be among the more unusual items in her collection. A model of Britannia, beautifully carved, in soap. The presentation of the gift was made by Ronnie Gray. Your Majesty, Your Royal Highness, in this hall, or near this hall, for over the last hundred years, we've made, shaped and made some millions of tons of soap, and even more multi-million tons of soap. That no piece of soap uh, has given us greater pleasure in creating, designing, shaping, and naming than Britannia. And every one of these brothers would be most grateful if you would accept it as a small memento of your visit to the factory Come to our grateful thanks for bringing you the Queen was obviously pleased to meet the man who'd sculpted Britannia, Mike Carpino. The final part of the display was a range of the finished soaps, which were being viewed for quality control. And so, to the actual unveiling heralded by the band of the Cheshire Regiment.
that your Majesty's visit also falls at a time when the nation is celebrating the 300th anniversary of the accession of King William III and Queen Mary. Today sees the completion of the most up-to-date soap-making plant in the world. It will continue to supply our famous brands, not only in the United Kingdom, but to Europe and beyond. We are honored that Her Majesty is here. It is with great pleasure that I now ask Her Majesty to unveil the plaque recording the official opening of the soap-making plant. Cheers. 